Okay, in this video, we'll go ahead and talk about module eight and some problems that will, you should be prepared to answer on the exam. So um, module eight, it's all about discrete probability distributions. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna know is what is a discrete probability distribution? Or what are the requirements for um, a table such as this one to be a discrete probability distribution? Okay, so first type of question you should definitely be able to answer is, is this, is this a probability distribution? So you need to know what the requirements. Um, there, there are two requirements. The first requirement is that the sum, remember the sign for sigma means sum. So the sum of um, the probabilities, PR, P of X, should sum up to one, okay? So let's go ahead and check that assumption here. Um, if I do 0.2 plus 0.3 plus negative 0.1 plus 0.6, I get 1. Okay, so that's good. That's the first requirement. The next requirement is that all probabilities must be between 0 and 1. Okay, is that true? For this example, no, that's not true. So they say here the probability that x equals 0 Right, that probability x equals zero is negative 0.1, and that's not okay, right? So because of this, this is not a probability distribution function. Now, it's a very common misunderstanding. Uh, students will think that if x is negative, that this cannot be a probability distribution function, and that's not true. X is allowed to be negative, okay? So remember that. X, X can be any number between infinity and negative infinity, right? It's not bounded, right? X is the random variable. That is a very messy looking infinity. Infinity and negative infinity. So X is not bounded. What is bounded is the probability of X. So when you're determining if something is a probability distribution function, you should be focusing only on this row. Do not do not focus on that row. It doesn't matter, okay, what the values of x are, okay? All right, remember that when you're taking your exam. That's an important thing that you will see on your exam, okay? Okay, so, um, so that is step, that's the first thing, requirements. So next is interpretation. So know how to uh, construct a probability distribution function and how to use it to calculate some probabilities. So we'll go ahead and talk about that next. So um, in terms of, actually, you know what? In terms of construction, I did not write down an example. So let's go ahead and write down an example right now. So, you know, let's, I think in one of my previous videos, I did, you know, flipping a coin twice. So let's say let X uh, be the number of heads, okay? Um, when a coin is flipped twice. Uh, a coin is flipped twice. All right. So um, we want to find the probability distribution for x. Okay, so you should be able to do this type of thing. So um, let's, let me again list out my sample space. We could have head, 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 tail, tail, head, or tail, tail, okay? And what is x in each of these cases? x is, for this first case, head, head. So x is the number of heads, so it's two there. x is the number of heads. We have one head here, one head here, and zero heads there, okay? So when I'm constructing my probability distribution function, there are three different values x can take, 0, 1, or 2. All right, and what's the probability that x equals 0? What is the probability of getting 0 heads? Okay, in this case, this would just be the probability of getting a tail tail, which is 1 fourth, right? One out of the four um, things in the sample space Right, so one fourth. What about the probability x equals one? 
This is the hardest one, actually. So let me go on to the probability x equals 2. That one's easier. So this one would just be the probability of getting a head head, which is, again, it happens one item out of the four in the sample space. So this is one out of four. Now, what about probability x equals 1? So this could be a tail head or, so when I say that word or, that's the addition rule, or it could be a tail head. So it could be a tail, tail, it could be a head, tail, or tail head, right? And so we want to add both those probabilities together. So this is 1 out of 4 plus 1 out of 4. So this is 2 out of 4, which is 1 half. Okay? So that's constructing a probability distribution function. So later, you know, if I were to ask you, well, what's the probability of getting um, at least one heads? So what's the probability? Um, what is the probability that x is at least 1. In other words, what's the probability I get at least one head? So this is an interpretation type question. So at least one means greater than or equal to one. So this would be, well, it could be one, that's one half, or it could be two, which is one fourth. So I'd add those two together and I get three fourths. Right? Or I could have done 1 minus the probability of 0 heads using the complements. 1 minus 1 fourth is also 3 fourths. Okay. So that's the interpretation type questions and constructing um, probability distribution functions. Okay. So uh, next, um, you know, calculating the mean and standard deviation of a probability distribution function and then finding unusual events. Now I'm going to save the range rule of thumb for the next uh, for module 9 video just because um, when you have binomial distributions it le lends itself nicely to using the range rule of thumb for unusual values. For this video I'm going to talk about using probabilities. Now you need to know uh, both these rules, okay? You'll see both of them on your exam, guaranteed. So um, it'll, it'll tell you using probabilities or using the range rule of thumb. It'll tell you which one to use. Okay. So this next problem I'm going to do is going to do all three of these. So let's go ahead and go on to that. So here we have a probability distribution function. I don't really define what x is here. Um, what matters is that you're able to use use this table and then calculate a bunch of things given it. Okay. So find the probability that x is at least 1, so greater than or equal to 1. Easiest way, especially when you have a bigger table like this, is 1 minus the probability x equals 0. So that would be 1 minus, so remember at least 1, 1 or greater, so 1 minus this guy, so 1 minus 0 0.1, that is 0.9, right? The total thing adds up to 1, okay? Okay, so what's the probability that x is at most 2? So now this is kind of just testing do you know what at most 2 means? So at most 2, so that means is 2 at most 2? Yes, right? Is, is 3 at most 2? No, right? Is 1 at most 2? Yes. So these 3, so it means x is less than or equal to 2. Okay? So just ask yourself, you know, with all these different x values, if that meets this requirement. That should help. Okay? So less than or equal to 2. So that would just be the probability x is 0, add that to the probability x is 1, and add that to the probability that x is 2. So 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 is 0.6. All right, the probability x is more than 4, so more than 4, greater than 4, so that's, there's just 5 there, right? So being more than 4 is only 5 is your choice. So that's 0.1 right here, 0.1, more than 4. All right. So now, going on to finding the mean or expected value, I'm actually going to need to hang in there with me for a moment. I am going to need to move this down so I'm able to see it when I'm calculating the mean or expected value. 
Okay. So let's see here. What's our formula for mean? Now you are given a formula sheet. So um, actually, yeah, let me go ahead and pull up our formula sheet. In the Blackboard, it gives it to you. It's basically in every folder that we have. But here it is. Let's go ahead and open that. Look at that for a minute. So let's see here. There it is. Sum of x times the probability of x. All right. So there it is. That's nice. So we just need to know how to use that, basically. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. So what I need to do is I need to create another row here that's going to be um, x times the probability of x, all right? All right, so I'm going to multiply these guys. So if I multiply this guy, 0 times 0 0.1, I get 0. 0 times 0 0.2, I get 0 0.2. 2 times 0 0.3, I get 0 0.6. 3 times 0 0.2, I get 0.6. 4 times 0.1, I get 0.4. 5 times 0.1, I get 0.5. All right, then I'm going to sum up this guy. I'm going to sum this way. So I have 0 plus 0.2 plus 0.6 plus 0.6 plus 0.4 plus 0.5. What I get? I get 2.3. Okay? So the sum of x times p of x is 2. 0.3, and that's my answer. So the mean or the expected value, which is basically I create another column on my table here, and I'm able to figure it out. All right, so now what about the standard deviation? So the standard deviation, there's also a formula. I'm going to go ahead and write it here. So sigma is the sum, or the square root, of the sum of x squared times p of x minus mu squared. Right, where's mu actually? This is mu here, the mean, mu. Okay, we use this little Greek letter mu. Okay, so I already have that guy. All I need is this guy over here. So I have my table. I'll go ahead and rewrite my table this time. So p of x. My third row now is going to be x squared times p of x. Instead of it being x times p of x, now it's going to be x squared times p of x. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. I just copied the table from right here. Okay, so now what's x squared? 0 squared times 0 0.1. What's 0 squared? It's just 0. So 1 squared, what's 1 squared? It's just 1. So 1 times 0 0.2, that's 0 0.2. Okay, what's 2 squared? 2, t 2 squared is 4. So 4 times 0 0.3 is 1.2. What's 3 squared? It's 9, right? So 9 times 0 0.2 is 1.8. OK, what's 4 squared? 16. So 16 times 0 0.1 is 1 1.6. 5 squared, 25. 25 times 0 0.1 is 2.5. All right, so now I just have to add this guy all up, add up this row, straight across. Okay, and what do I get? So 0 plus 0 0.2, 0 plus 0.2, plus 1.2, plus 1.8, plus 1.6, plus 2.5. Okay, plug into my calculator. I got 7.3. All right. Always a good idea to double check that. All right, so 7.3. So this is 7.3, right? So this guy is 7.3, that's sum, okay? Minus 2.3 squared. I got to square the mu, right? Don't forget to do that. That's the most common mistake, right? So what's 7.3 minus 2.3 squared? That's 2.01. Okay, so go ahead and take the square root of that guy. Square root of 2.01 is... 1.4177. Usually we round off to four decimal places. So leave it there. All right. Okay. So um, is the event that x is 5? So 
is the event that x is 5. So basically, x is 5. Is that unusual? So use probability to justify your answer. That's the way I'll clarify that in the exam. I'll say, you know, use the probability of x equaling 5. So use this to justify your answer. Okay? So what is the probability x equals 5? Well, using this table, we can see when x is 5, the probability is 0.1. Okay? So the um, unusual events are when the probability is less than or equal to 0.05. So is that less than or equal to 0 0.05? It's 0.1 less than or equal to 0 0.05? No, right? It's not. So this is not an unusual event. So we would say not unusual.